Hi there. I don't want to waste your time, so let's just get right into it, eh? App number one, Night Owl. Mac OS Mojave brings a highly requested feature, and that is dark mode. It really does an excellent job. I'm really surprised by how nice it looks in pretty much every application, and I hope they bring it to iOS soon. The problem is, is that I still enjoy using light mode during the day, and switching back and forth really isn't that convenient, so I found myself just leaving it in light mode. That is, until I discovered Night Owl, a free utility. If you right-click this little menu bar item, it immediately and automatically switches from light mode to dark mode. You can also open up the menu here, change it that way if you prefer, but more interestingly, you can schedule when it switches from light to dark mode based on a time or based on your location's sunrise and sunset, which is pretty cool. So at night, it's in dark mode. In the day, it's in light mode. You can also, if you prefer dark mode and want to leave it on all the time, but there are certain applications that you don't like in dark mode. For example, one that I know looks weird is text edit because you have to type white text on black. Now you can go into the view tab and change it to a white background, but then that just, I don't know, it looks kind of honky. So if you go in here, I can choose to, quit the application. We go in here, we scroll down to text edit, and then we reopen a new text edit document. Check it out. It's in light mode, but the rest of the user interface and all my other apps remain in dark mode. Really, really nice. Tip number two, spectacle. Look, I'm a pretty big Mac OS fanboy, but one thing I have to admit Windows just simply does better is window management. Hey, maybe that's why it's called Windows. I digress. Anyway, macOS just doesn't do a very good job at window management. You have to drag the windows individually and resize them individually. You can hold down the full screen button and then shift it into a half screen mode. But then over here, you have to have another full screen app running half screen. It just, it doesn't work. And so there are a lot of third party utilities out there. The most popular one is Magnet, Better Snap Tool is another option, but those are both paid. Now, Better Touch Tool is a free application, but it's way more complex, unnecessarily difficult for beginners. And I think that Spectacle just does the job simply. It's also free and open source, which makes it pretty cool. This uh, just gives you the ability to basically align the window wherever you want. Now, you can scroll through the menu items, but there are a number of keyboard shortcuts. You can program them any way you want, but I think the defaults are really good. They just take a couple of days to kind of get used to. But you can justify it to the left half, the right half, top half, bottom half. You can also do the top right quarter, top left quarter, bottom right quarter, bottom left quarter. Uh, what else can you do? You can scroll through um, a number of options here uh, into thirds, and you can go third on the middle, third on the half. There's just a lot of different options for you, and uh, it really works well. It takes, again, a couple of days to learn the shortcuts, but once you do, it's just second nature, and I really, really think you should give it a shot. App number three, Helium. Hi, Daddy Doug. <laughs> a couple of years ago, Safari got a really cool feature that a lot of people still don't know about, and I think it's because YouTube makes it difficult to access, but if you right-click twice with your mouse, you can click this enter picture in picture button and it actually moves the video that you're watching to a dedicated floating picture in picture window. You can resize it, make it whatever size you want, and it stays static. It floats above the rest of your user interface. So you can basically close this window, navigate somewhere else, and continue watching the video in the corner. It's super awesome. Not very productive, but it's super awesome. The problem is, is that it only works with YouTube and very few other video websites. Most notably, it does not work with Netflix and Hulu. And so you have to use basically with Netflix and Hulu a, an application that's been around forever. It's not as elegant, but it still does the job. And it's called Helium. Uh, it's available for free. It's actually available in the App Store, which is kind of surprising given how strange it seems to function. But you can either uh, press Command L or click Location and then Open Web URL. The problem with this app is that you actually have to copy and paste the URL of the video that you're in. Uh, it's not hyper elegant, but it basically acts as a web browser. So as far as you know, Netflix is concerned, you're just watching inside of a browser. Now the video is not actually going to play back because Netflix knows that I'm using my screen recording software right now and for piracy efforts won't show the video, but I assure you that it does work and it does a really good job. It's the same, it floats above the rest of the user interface. You can move it wherever you want. There are a couple of other neat features that this offers that the main picture in picture doesn't, like translucency, if you want it to kind of stay a, a little see-through while you're working. But Helium is an excellent option. I've been using it for years and years and years, long before Safari picture in picture became a thing. And I still use it because Safari PIP really only works in YouTube. App number four, Alfred. Think of Alfred as Spotlight on Crack. The problem with Alfred is that like 
probably crack. I don't know. I've never tried it. It's very addictive and it basically takes over your entire workflow. And anytime you move to a Mac that doesn't have Alfred installed, you're like, oh no, I don't remember how to do anything because Alfred is so powerful. Now, Spotlight used to suck and it, it sucked for a long time. Spotlight has gotten very good over the last few years and it has copied a lot of the kind of features that Alfred invented. And so a lot of people think Alfred is redundant, that it doesn't serve much purpose anymore, but they're wrong. Now it is true that Alfred basically does most of what Spotlight does. It finds uh, applications, it finds files, it does things a little better, I think, than Spotlight. So it doesn't show you a preview like Spotlight does, but you can press Shift and it opens the system quick look, which I think is way better than Spotlight's shoddy little tiny thumbnail integration on the right. Um, it also does uh, some really other cool things. It does web searches, so I can search, I don't know, uh, diapers. I don't know why I would need those. I don't have a kid. But if I did, uh, I could press Command-2 and then it opens in an Amazon search or Wikipedia search instead of always searching Google, which is kind of what Spotlight does. Super great for searching the web. It has a lot of features that Spotlight has now, like uh, the calculator, currency conversion. That stuff isn't all that neat. But it does do some things that Spotlight doesn't that is amazing. Uh, you can define words. So Spotlight does that. Um, but it, I don't think it does as good of a job as Alfred. The other thing that Alfred does, and this is one thing that is indispensable, I love it, is it does spelling. So if you type spell, you can horribly botch the spelling of a word like, uh, what's, diarrhea, people always misspell. That's not the right, I didn't spell it the right way, but the system tells you how to spell it. And then if you hit enter, it actually copies to your clipboard. Super, super, I'm not gonna Google that. Super, super great way uh, to, to manage that. And you can totally, I mean, look at this. Spell, I'm gonna, you can totally botch the spelling. Like, all right. And it, it still finds it. It's really, really good. Uh, it also does system commands, which Spotlight doesn't. So I can put the computer to sleep. I can restart it. I can enter the screensaver. I can lock it. It does a really, really, really good job uh, with all of that stuff. And that's all available in the free version. But they do have a pro version called the Power Pack. The Power Pack, if you're ever going to buy a piece of Mac software, buy the Alfred Power Pack. It is incredible. It has a complete clipboard history. So it saves everything you copied your clipboard. Uh, files as well as text. And they're available at any time. So you can copy multiple stuff and paste, 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 paste. There are applications, standalone apps that do this, but why get those when you can just use Alfred? Another thing that it does, which is really awesome, let me open a text uh, edit document here. It has snippet expansion. So if I type, for example, SSS, it says stay snazzy, because that's a phrase that I type a lot. It saves me some time. I can also type D date, that types the date, or tea time and that does the time. So there are a lot of really awesome functionalities uh, available in the pro version of Alfred that uh, I think are just amazing. One actually really good example, if we, let me show you a real world issue here. So let's go to the clipboard, copy that Netflix link that I just used in Helium, and I'll copy it to my clipboard. And instead of opening Helium, uh, you can use one of many workflows available uh, in Alfred for the uh, community. So you can type H colon, and now it'll open this link in Helium. Super, super cool. I don't have to open Helium. I don't have to do, it's amazing. So I'm now showing you tips for the other tips that I've showed you in this video. Alfred is incredible. Uh, it has multiple file selection. I need to shut up because I can go on about Alfred forever. Uh, so you can scroll down this list and you can add, oops, sorry, um, botched that. You can add uh, multiple files into a hopper. And then when you get all the files you want, you can go to the next page, you can move all of these files to another folder, you can drag and drop, you can email them directly from Alfred. It's, it's incredible. Alfred is amazing. Just download it, even the free version is worth a shot. And if you download the Power Pack, the paid version, you will never look back. It is the singular Mac utility that I physically cannot use a Mac without. It is incredible. App number five, plug. Hype Machine is an amazing website that so few people know about, and it, it hurts my heart because it's been around forever and I use it all the time. A lot of people ask me where I find all of this amazing music that no one knows about. The answer 90% of the time is Hype Machine. It is a website that basically is a fancy RSS reader. It scrapes, uh, scrapes hundreds of music blogs and indie music blogs and it, uh, basically every genre. And then once it finds all of the songs, all the new music that's being listed on these blogs, it finds the MP3 files on SoundCloud or on Bandcamp, et cetera, and then allows you to play them inside of a browser window. You can choose to like songs, and the more that the community likes the songs, the higher they rise up in the rankings. And you can find some truly incredible music that only a few thousand people know about. Hype Machine is 
amazing. The problem is, is that the UI is not very good. I don't find the web player very good at all. And because there's such a really awesome community behind this website, there are third-party apps available for both Mac and Windows. My favorite is Plug. Uh, Plug is superb in every way, shape, and form because it looks and feels like a Mac app. And you log into your Plug account and it will show you all of the popular music. Uh, it, Hype Machine has a lot of remixes, so you can choose to omit those from the search if you want. Um, I leave remixes enabled because they're pretty cool. And um, you can go through the music that you've liked in the past. You can look at upcoming music. Uh, you can search through uh, RSS feeds of yourself and friends. You can search specifically by genre. Uh, you have your friends list here. You can look at what your friends are listening to and what they've liked if they use Hype Machine. Your friend should be using it. You can search new songs and add them to your favorites list directly from this app. It is amazing and music plays through here. Generally, it's pretty high uh, bitrate quality. It always fetches the highest available quality on, on Bandcamp and SoundCloud. SoundCloud's usually not great, but Bandcamp can get pretty good. It is a fantastic way to find fantastic new music for any genre. Give Hype Machine a shot and give Plug a shot. Uh, it's free, it's awesome, and there's no reason not to. Last but certainly not least, we have app number six, Encrypto. Encrypto is an app that's been around for quite a while. It's developed by MacPaw. They make some of the best Mac software around. Most of their apps are shareware, they're paid, but this is actually a freeware application that's available for both Mac OS and Windows. I think it's the only app they make for Windows and you'll know why here in a second. But what it allows you to do is encrypt and send uh, files with AES 256-bit encryption. You can also save them to your own drive. Maybe you have sensitive documents that you don't want sitting on your drive if someone knows the password to your computer. Or maybe you wanna send something uh, to someone over email. You don't wanna use Dropbox or Google Drive, but you need a way to send it to them securely. And if it gets intercepted in transit to make sure that it has strong encryption. Well, encrypto is, is what you need. Uh, you just basically take any file you want. Let's do this PSD, this Photoshop file. You drag it inside the app and then Really, all you have to do is set a password and an optional hint. So let's do password, and uh, there you go. Let's do hi, dummy. Neither of those are helpful. It's not a good password, it's not a good hint. But then you click encrypt, and it uses security, top security uh, AES 256-bit encryption. And you can either save it to your own hard drive. It does not delete the original, so that's good in a way, but it's also bad in the sense that if you are hoping to encrypt your files, you'll need to encrypt them first and then delete the originals. Um, but you can save as to your own drive to do with whatever you want later. Or you can use the share sheet directly in macOS to send them over messages, over email, or over Slack, whatever you want. And then once you've done that, um, it's awesome because it's end -end encrypted. And so let's save this file. Let's call it, uh, sure, thumbnail. Save it to the desktop. And it saves in a .crypto extension. And that is the good and the bad thing about this app. The good thing is it's super easy and seamless. The bad thing is that it only opens inside of Encrypto, the application. So it uses an encryption that's not parsable uh, natively inside of either Windows or Mac OS. Uh, but at the same time, there's really no easy way to do it from within Windows and Mac OS that's natively supported, that doesn't use the command line and doesn't have cross-platform compatibility. I've tried a lot of options and I've ended up just sticking with Encrypto because it just is simple, it's robust, it works. I highly recommend it. And that's all for me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, that YouTube uh, rewind button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like these, but most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.